after watching this video, you should be able to do a few different things. One is to be able to draw ray diagrams to find the image distance and magnification for concave and convexly shaped mirrors. The second is to be able to calculate the distances and focal lengths using the mirror equation. And finally, be able to distinguish what is meant by a real image and a virtual image. Before you go on, make sure you have a ruler, colored pencils or pens, and that worksheet that you were given in class. To begin, there's a few different terms that are associated with curved mirrors that are important to know. The first one is called the center of curvature. That's the point in the center of a sphere through which the mirror was sliced. Imagine taking a baseball and finding the exact center of that baseball. That's what we mean by the center of curvature. The focal point is the place where parallel light rays would meet after they reflect off of the mirror. The focal length is the distance from the center of the spherical mirror to the focal point. It just so happens that the focal point is half the distance to that center of curvature. When we try to locate an image, it's important to draw a ray diagram. To draw a ray diagram for a curved mirror, you need to know the position of the object and also the position to the center of curvature. We're going to draw three different rays and they're all going to start from the same position on the object. Where any two rays intersect, that's going to locate our image. We have three different rays that we're going to choose from, but this third one just serves as a check for the actual construction of our other two rays. Here's your three different rays that we're going to draw. Ray one is going to be drawn parallel to the principal axis. When it reflects, based on the law of reflection, it goes through the focal point. Ray two is drawn through the focal point and is reflected parallel to the principal axis. Ray three is drawn through the center of curvature and so it reflects back on itself. Those three rays will be more clear as we begin to draw our diagrams. Okay, so let's start with case number one where the object is located beyond the center of curvature. This arrow right here is serving as our object. Again, it doesn't have to be there. As long as it's anywhere to the left of point C, that's going to be your object. To start out, we're going to draw ray one. Ray one connects the top of our object it travels parallel to the axis, hits the mirror, and when it reflects, it reflects through the focal point. Ray number two starts at the top of the object, it travels through the focal point, and then it's going to reflect parallel to that principal axis. Okay, what I have again is ray one drawn in red and ray two drawn in green. If I want to locate the image, I'm looking for where those two lines intersect. Okay, notice how that little teeny tiny blue arrow just popped up at you. What that is, that's our image location. Since I started at the top of the arrow, where my reflected rays cross is the top of the image. Okay, if I want to describe these image characteristics, I'm comparing the image to the actual object. Hopefully you'll notice that it is smaller, it is also inverted, and then it is also a real image. A real image means that the object, or excuse me, that the image could actually be focused on a screen. So if I were to put a piece of paper at that point where my red and my green lines cross, you would see the image actually focused in on that screen. What I want you to do is measure out the distance of your object. When you measure the distance of the object, you start from the mirror and measure all the way over to the object that you've drawn. You also need to measure out the distance from the mirror all the way over to your focal point. Put in that number for DO, put in that number for F, rearrange your algebra, and you're going to get the distance of your image. If you actually take your ruler then and measure out from the mirror to the image, your math answer and the physical answer should be very close to each other. Okay, again, hit pause and take a few minutes to do that process. Okay, let's move on to case two. With case number two, the object is going to be located at that center of curvature. Again, our object is the actual arrow drawn on the screen. Draw ray one. Again, it's parallel to the axis. It reflects through the focal point. Ray number two stops at the, starts at the same place of our object, goes through the focal point, and reflects parallel. Where they cross locates the image. 
Okay, that blue arrow represents our image. Let's once again describe the image characteristics. It's inverted. Okay, it's upside down compared to the actual object. It is actually the same size. And it is also a real image. Okay, please do the same thing. Hit pause and do your calculation. So again, you're measuring the distance from the object to the mirror. Measure your focal point and then do the math. For case number three, the object is located between the center of curvature and the focal point. As long as it is somewhere between C and F, it does not have to be exactly in the middle. Same thing, we're going to draw two of our rays. Parallel to the axis will reflect through the focal point. You're going to go through the focal point and reflect parallel. Where the two rays cross locates our image. If we were to describe this image, it is inverted. It's bigger, so we're going to say that it is magnified. And it is also a real image. Again, if it was a real image, that means I could put a piece of paper or a screen at that location and actually be able to project the image at that place. Hit pause and do your math. Measure the distance between the object and the mirror. Measure the focal point and calculate your DI. Case number four, the object is located at the focal point. Parallel to the axis reflects through the focal point. Now notice we can't draw ray number two. Since we're at the focal point, I can't go through the tip of the arrow and the focal point and hit the mirror at the same time. So now we're going to draw ray number three. Ray number three connects the top of the arrow with the center of curvature. If it strikes the mirror, it would reflect back on itself. Okay. Is it possible for these two rays to ever cross? If you've drawn your diagram correctly, you should see that these two rays are completely parallel to each other. If we were to describe this image, all we say is it is located at infinity. So it's not a clear, distinct image. Since we don't have a distinct image, we can't do the math calculations. Okay, let's do case number five. Place your object in front of the focal point. Ray number one, again, is parallel to the axis, reflects through the focal point. Ray number two, again, lines up the focal point with the top of the image to the mirror. When this one reflects, it reflects parallel to the principal axis. Okay, now notice I've got my two reflected rays. They don't cross on the left-hand side of the mirror. But if I trace them backwards, they do cross. They're going to cross behind the mirror. There's your image. If I were to describe this image, I would say that it is upright. It's magnified, and it is a virtual image. That's the same type of image as you saw when you did the plane mirrors video. A virtual image is just an image that is located in a position where light cannot actually reach. So there's no way for me to physically get to where that image is located. That's the big difference between a virtual image and a real image. Again, our actual reflected rays don't cross. We had to trace them backwards to find it. A convex mirror is a little bit different. In a convex mirror, light is going to diverge away from the mirror instead of converging into a point. Study kind of this diagram and look at the different rays. They're still basically drawn the same way, but now they reflect just a little bit different. Okay, so ray number one, you're still parallel to that principal axis. But now when it reflects, it reflects up as if it came from the focal point. Ray number two starts on top of the object. You're aiming it at the center of curvature, and so it reflects back on itself. Ray number three starts at the top of the object, aims at the focal point, but then it reflects parallel. 
Tracing all three of these backwards gives you a virtual, upright, and reduced image. So all three of these rays are similar to what we've just drawn. It's just the reflected ray acts differently because the shape of the curve is opposite for what we've been looking at.